All right, so make sense for, in a legal sense in your mind of what we just saw happen today. So it's hard to, I mean, it's difficult to make sense of it because it's pretty stunning. Uh, I don't think many people saw this coming at all. I know that it was uh, kept secret, as you mentioned, uh, at the very highest levels. I heard Rory just found out about it about a moment before it happened. Yep. Uh, I know that uh, same with Greg Norman. So uh, it'll be very interesting to see what comes of this. I, I would note that in Commissioner Jay Monahan's letter to the players, he made a comment that it would have to be approved by the PGA Tour Policy Board. Uh, I looked up the policy board, the current composition of it. It includes five players uh, out of 11, which includes Rory McIlroy. Yep. So given the level of hostility and backlash that we're seeing from players on Twitter, that is, I, I would imagine, at least five out of 11 no votes. So, I mean, if they get one more, who knows? Um, but <laughs> I guess maybe there's a mechanism to push it through. Otherwise, I don't know what the voting requirements are, but uh, certainly a lot of details here to iron out. All right, so five days ago, USA Today published a story that was entitled uh, CEO Says Endeavor Considered $1 Billion Investment in Live Golf That Would Have Replaced Saudi Arabia as, I guess, the chief fund uh, backer of that tour. And Endeavor has, you know, they're, they're involved in sports entertainment, wrestling, uh, UFC, uh, IMG. They're, so they're obviously a major player in sports, and they are a, also a sponsor uh, of PGA Tour. They're a contributor uh, and a backer of PGA Tour events. And Ari Emanuel, the CEO, basically said that the PGA Tour told them not to do it. How, does, how did this kind of tip the antitrust scales against the PGA Tour if this turns out to be true? So, yeah, that, I thought that w when I first read that comment that essentially PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan asked them not to and they didn't because of that, that is something that a Department of Justice antitrust investigation is, I mean, those are the type of exact type of conversations that they're looking for. Uh, so that was pretty shocking. Uh, I am actually interested. I've seen a lot of people say that this may, that may have been the precursor for these discussions, but I think that they may have opened up a whole new can of worms on the antitrust side because the same thing happened when the NBA and the ABA merged uh, back in the 70s, in, I believe it was the 70s, yeah. and Oscar Robertson and, and others filed an antitrust lawsuit because at that point there was one singular dominant uh, source for professional basketball, and I think we're just about to see the same thing. So they, you know, the, this, this merger may have settled uh, – their concerns about maybe PIP being subject to discovery and sitting for depositions and everybody opening their books and long litigation, but it, it may have also just opened up a whole other antitrust uh, can of worms that, that will play out over the next couple of years or so. See, because the way I look at this, and you you tell me I'm wrong, you're you're the attorney, <laughs> you're, you're the uh, golf law uh, expert for conduct detrimental. Again, we talked to Dan Wallach a lot. Uh, and congratulations, he and his wife had a baby not that long ago, and Dan Lust as well. Um, but I thought that the PGA Tour's position prior to this story wasn't terrible. But I thought that when I saw this story, to me, five days later, maybe it's just a coincidence, five days later, without the players really knowing about it, you would think as much as the they carried the water for the tour over the last 18 months, especially Rory McIlroy, uh, you would think that they would have had some heads up. I just I can't help but think that there is a correlation to this story and where we are today. So I agree with you. I thought the PGA Tour was in a great spot as far as the litigation goes. I think the public investment fund being on the verge of having to be subject to discovery and open up their books and have their officials sit for depositions uh, maybe accelerated the player a little bit on these whatever merger talks there may have been. Uh, I will also say that I, I saw reports that they were actually not planning on announcing this today uh, and that they got news pretty late that it was going to leak. Uh, so they made the decision to come out and just kind of announce it a little bit of a spur of the moment. Um, so we're getting uh, also some interesting details about what might be the corporate structure that are coming out too. Uh, so uh, I, I think this is going to open up for sure an antitrust investigation.
especially if the players are as angry as they seem to be on Twitter. And I can't uh, say I blame them for that, given how, you know, they've, as you mentioned, kind of carried the torch and now, uh, you know, basically have just uh, uh, been stabbed in the back. At least they feel a little bit by the PGA Tour. Careful, careful, John Nucci from Conduct Detrimental. We can't. I don't think we can say stabbed in the back uh, with re, with regards to to any any re, re relationship between Liv and the PGA Tour. There are other things that we also probably can't say. So I'm not going to. Um, when you read the PGA Tour release today, I assume you I assume you did uh, as I did. People were asking me questions about it. I'm like, I haven't even had a chance to read it yet. Were there details that you were hoping to see in the tour's release that weren't there? Um, you know, not necessarily. I, I was hoping to see maybe a little bit more of an explanation of how this can benefit the players, maybe an explanation of what happens to live player contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think the biggest issue is all of these guys that went to live they got hundreds of million dollars in contracts. I don't know what happens to those contracts. I saw reports that they would have to pay fines uh, in order to come back and play in PGA Tour events. And that leads me to believe that maybe they are going to operate two independent tours and just interchange players. Uh, so I think it was a little light on details, but that may have been uh, because, as I mentioned, they, I, I think they got a little bit blindsided by the fact that the news was going to leak out. Uh, so they wanted to get out ahead of it and, Maybe it's a little late on the details for that reason. Does, doesn't it feel like this whole thing was just thrown together at the end? That, like, we don't know how many events. We don't know when the events are going to be. We don't know where the events are going to be. We don't know what they're going to look like. We don't know who's going to be eligible to play. I mean, ultimately, we're talking yeah. about golf tournaments. So we, we have created this new entity, but nobody knows what the entity is going to look like. And there wasn't even a suggestion as to what it might look like, it just seems to me that the golf part of this is going to be figured out down the road. And that, to yeah. me, shows something that was just kind of thrown together at the last minute. I uh, I couldn't agree more, yeah. It uh, seems a little bit disorganized, and maybe that's the reason why. Uh, but I, you know, it, it's unbelievable to me that the players that passed over, I know Hideki, I think had a massive offer for upwards of two, three hundred million dollars yep. that he turned down. And, you know, I, I don't know that maybe just fines on players that want to come back is going to, you know, it's like players that stayed loyal throughout this whole time. Yeah. Uh, I, I had all, another, another little interesting wrinkle to this. I wouldn't necessarily be surprised if we see some type of, and I don't really know how this would play out, but if we see some type of players union uh, with professional golf, if there is just, you know, everything is controlled by a single entity now. Uh, so that that's another little something to look for. Yeah, Hideki Matsuyama turned down a big offer, and he would have been an absolute star. They would have had events in Japan. And Tom Kim, uh, who was a superstar at the end of last season, has not had a good season this year. Man, he could have gone too and made boatloads of, of money and I mean they're all making great money anyway nobody has to hold a benefit for any of these guys John Nucci Conduct Detrimental is the podcast he is the chief golf law correspondent at jnucci23 on Twitter hey thank you very much for jumping on I appreciate your time thank you Adam take care you got it